for the mind to settle down, you have to find something it likes, something it finds engaging. This is entirely up to you. If it's the breath, what kind of breathing do you like? Where do you like to focus on the breath? What kind of perception of the breath helps you settle down? This is something you have to evaluate for yourself. If not the breath, then what other topic do you find engaging? It's important that you find something you like and you figure out what the mind likes. The Buddha compares meditating to being a cook. The wise, experienced cook notices how to read the person he's feeding to see if the person likes salty food or sweet food or bitter food, sour food and then provide more and more of that. That kind of cook, as the Buddha said, gets a reward. If you don't know how to read the person you're feeding, you're not going to get any reward. The reward in concentration, of course, is the mind gets to settle down and has a sense of refreshment, a sense of well-being that comes from the meditation. And There are lots of books to tell you different techniques. And it's up to you to find the one that works. You have to learn how to use your powers of evaluation to get to know your own mind. And this is a necessary part of developing discernment. We're here to comprehend suffering. That's one of the duties we have with regard, with regard to the Four Noble Truths. And as the Buddha said, to comprehend means to develop a sense of dispassion. You would think, well, why would we be passionate for suffering? The problem is that there is a side to suffering we like. In other words, the things that we do that cause suffering hold some appeal for us. And our basic attitude is that it's worth it. We get some sort of satisfaction, some sort of gratification out of these things that we do. And we learn how to turn a blind eye to the stress and suffering that's caused. As the Buddha said, this is why we're, we cling to things, is they do have a pleasant side. He didn't say that the five aggregates were totally painful. If they're totally painful, we wouldn't cling to them. It's because we find that there's some pleasure there and we figure that it's worth it. It's that figuring where we're, we're pretty weak. Psychologists who study the way people go about happiness or trying to find happiness find that people are very poor judges of what actually makes them happy. They can know that the odds are stacked against them. They can know that there's a lot of suffering involved in something, and yet they still go for it. I was reading a piece a couple of years back by a native of Las Vegas saying that one of the things he liked about Las Vegas was how honest everybody was. He meant it ironically, of course. They put up billboards that say, 90% payback rate. And they're telling you right out, you give them a dollar, they'll give you 90 cents back. And yet people still go for it. So a lot of the meditation is learning how to read the effort that goes into what you're doing and the pleasure that comes out of it and trying to evaluate whether it's good or not. Because that comprehending and to develop dispassion, to develop disenchantment, you're passing judgment. You're evaluating things and deciding whether they're worth it or not. And if your powers of evaluation are weak, you'll do a lot of things that will cause a lot of unnecessary suffering and there's not much to show for it. Years ago, when I first went to Thailand, before I ordained, I was teaching in Chiang Mai, and a group of us once a week we'd get together and buy some Northern Thai food and have a picnic. 
One person would go to one market and get this curry, another person would go to that market and get the barbecue chicken, whatever. And the next day, after our picnic, everybody would have diarrhea. And then the next week we went back and did it again. And thinking back on it, it was pretty foolish. A few years later, after I was ordained, I was staying in Ryong. And I was still getting diarrhea twice a week. There was no specific food that I could track down, but it seemed to be part of the occupational hazard of being a monk in Thailand. And that was worth it. If I was going to stay with a John Furong, I was going to have to put up with some hardships, and that was one of them. So what we're doing is we're meditating, is learning how to judge what's worth the effort. After all, the Buddha said the five aggregates, when you cling to them, are suffering. This path that we're following is also made out of five aggregates. The concentration we're doing right now has form, feeling, perceptions, fabrication, consciousness, all right here. We want to get to see that these aggregates put together in this way, even though they do involve effort and there is a some pain in the practice, still it's worth it, so that we can look at other more blatant forms of suffering. This is a lot of what concentration is about, getting the mind still enough and with a good enough sense of well-being, refreshment from the meditation, that we're in a better position to see what are we doing that's causing stress and why are we so addicted to it, and can we see where it's not worth it. Can we learn how to pass intelligent judgment, be judicious in our activities? Because when the Buddha describes suffering, he, first he talks about birth, aging, illness, death, not getting what you want, having to be with things you don't like, having to be separated from things that you like. And the solution, of course, is not just hanging around with things you like all the time. He wants you to dig a little bit deeper. That's where you see it's the five clinging aggregates. When you have passion and delight in form, feeling, perception, fabrications, consciousness. Why do you have that passion and delight? It's, that's what the clinging is. And the word for clinging, Obadana, can also mean that you feed on these things. You're trying to get some nourishment from them. And your, your mind is developing diarrhea. That's the suffering. And yet you don't see it, or at least you see that the pleasure you get out of these things is worth it. But when the mind is well fed with the concentration, you look at a lot of the activities that held some attraction for you, and you can see that they're not worth it. And as the concentration gets more solid and your discernment gets more subtle, you begin to see areas where there was some stress you didn't see before. Again, the question is, is it worth it? So we're learning how to be more skilled in passing judgment, in evaluating things. All too often we hear that the meditation is to teach us not to pass judgment. And that makes sense only in the sense of not being judgmental, i.e jumping to quick conclusions without looking at things carefully. But we look at things and withhold judgment for the time being so that we can pass wise judgment as to what activities are worth it and which ones are not. There are times when you have to put up with pain in the practice. The Buddha said it's like straightening an arrow. You have to run it between two flames to get out all the kinks. Once the arrow is straight, then you don't need to use those flames anymore. In other words, you learn to judge when pain is useful and when it's not. If you see that living by your, your idea of what's pleasant, what seems easeful, is causing unskillful qualities to arise in your mind, you've got to pass judgment on that. You've got to live with some more pain.
push yourself harder in the practice. Be willing to sit with pain. So it braces the mind. But if you see that living at your ease is not bad for the mind, okay, the Buddha says don't reject any pleasure that accords with the Dharma. And how do you know? You've got to learn how to pass judgment. So this is one of the things we're doing as we're getting the mind to settle down, is we're learning how to pass judgment on what's working and what's not. This is an important step in developing discernment. So look at what's working for your mind. And there's nobody going to step in and say, this is right and that's wrong, this kind of breathing is too long, that kind of breathing is too short. You've got to learn how to read these things yourself. And when the mind says it likes X, well, can you believe it? Try it for a while and see what results you get. If it's bad for the mind, learn. again, <clears throat> learn how to read that fact. It's when you become sensitive to these things and can learn how to pass judgment wisely. That's when your discernment really grows and really is of use, really makes a difference. Because the whole purpose of this practice is to learn how to stop doing the things that cause us suffering. And so you have to watch to see, well, what am I doing? What are, what are, the, what are the pleasures that come from it? What are the pains? Which is more long-term? Which is greater? Is it worth it? These are all value judgments. When you decide it's not worth it anymore, it's like deciding that you've had enough of a certain kind of food. That too is a value judgment. So we're here to learn how to make those judgments wisely. And that's how we complete the duties in the Four Noble Truths, when you comprehend something to the point of total disenchantment, total dispassion. That's when you let go of the cause. It's because you had craving for that thing that you kept going after it again and again and again, like the Northern Thai food. And you decide, okay, the diarrhea is no longer work. Anything that you want to get involved in again. Okay, that's when you let go. That's when you stop creating the suffering. And it's through developing our concentration and our discernment that we can make these judgments wisely. So judging your concentration is actually a good thing. You may find that in the beginning your powers of judgment are weak. But with use, they become strong. 